All right, folks, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, joining us now is Newsmax's John Bachman to talk about the funeral of Major General Harold Green. Well, earlier today, Steve, the funeral services for two-star Army General Harold Green began at Arlington National Cemetery just outside of Washington, D.C. But there are also new details out today about the August 5th insider attack that left Green dead and several other American and NATO troops injured. We have more info about the other people wounded by the attacking Afghani soldier. Their names were not released in a recent report, but we did find out that one of the wounded was an Army specialist, a reservist from Northern California, who, when not deployed, worked as a customer service manager at Apple Computer in California. That reservist told military investigators he moved to shield a British colonel who was also wounded after the Afghan soldier opened fire. That reservist was struck by six different bullets fired from the attacker's weapon. Two of those bullets went to his leg, one tore into his shoulder, and three rounds were stopped by his bulletproof vest. That vest likely allowed the American specialist to return fire with his rifle and his pistol. Also, one of General Green's aides, a 31-year-old Army captain, was also severely injured. That captain volunteered for the deployment and was shot multiple times. He's now paralyzed below the waist. An Army major was also wounded in the attack. He served 11 years in the Army, and he had completed four tours of duty. He was acting as a public affairs officer at the time of the attack. He's married with two daughters. Well, an Army captain and a non-commissioned naval officer were also injured. Those details are coming from StarsAndStripes.com, which also was citing a Washington Post article. We called the Pentagon to independently verify that information, but a military spokesman would only tell us that the shooting is still under investigation. Also yesterday in Afghanistan and at the Pentagon, General Green, who was by all accounts a very popular officer, was honored for his dedication and the care he showed for the men and women who served under him. Harry was a soldier a husband, a father, a son, a friend, a leader, and a great patriot. His service and his sacrifice is a reminder to all Americans about the dedication, commitment, and the risk our men and women knowingly take when they raise their right hand to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That is Army Chief of Staff General Ray Odierno speaking at the Pentagon yesterday. Now, according to the Long War Journal, which focuses on counterterrorism and Islamic radicalism, there have been dozens of insider attacks this year alone in Afghanistan. The latest numbers take us up through June. There have been a total of 87 insider attacks in 2014. Those turncoat attackers have killed 142 troops which are part of the U.S.-led coalition. An additional 165 others have been wounded. Also, at the funeral today, several high-ranking military officers and many members of Green's family, his brother Jonathan, told the Albany New York Times Union that, quote, I'm 52 years old and he is still my hero. Green's father also told that paper that the death of his son has left a void, but even he admitted that there's, quote, no way in the world you can protect against a complete surprise. Green is the highest-ranking officer killed in a combat zone since the Vietnam War. Steve, back to you. All right, John, thank you very much. A great report, and uh, it's very important to not only honor Major General Harold Green, but also recognize the others who were uh, wounded in that horrific attack. And speaking of honoring Major uh, General Harold Green, uh, I think the President did a disservice by opting, according to reports, not to talk about the general uh, until uh, he signed a bill for the VA, um, not to talk about it when it happened, really, not to talk about it in the aftermath, not to be at Andrews Air Force Base to welcome the body home, uh, because he reportedly uh, did not want to um, elevate the death of, uh, of uh, General uh, Green above the death of others who have died uh, serving our country in Afghanistan specifically. And I think that's a, that's a huge mistake. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, when, the, when, it, when the highest ranking officer in the entire conflict is killed and his body comes home and you're there in Washington, he wasn't on vacation, you go to Andrews Air Force Base and you salute and you honor the, 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 the body that, that, that returns just like you did the Benghazi, the four victims in Benghazi. Anyway, all right, folks, what, what could you do if the president is the president? We'll be back with special correspondent for the Daily Beast, Michael Tomoski, right after the break. But first, stay tuned for your Max to Life moment, talking about devaluing your home.
Competition in the housing market can be fierce. Buyers have lots of choices, so if you're getting ready to sell your home, avoid these common mistakes that will help decrease its value. Some of the mistakes that people make when they put their house on the market is going with what's hot at the time. So what's trending right now might not be trending in a year from now, so you have to try to keep things simple but appealing. So while you think it's hot today and people might like it, not everyone has the same taste, so avoid the trends. Another thing is don't over landscape the house. Don't flatten land. Don't do things that won't come back when you sell the home as far as equity goes. Avoid extreme colors and go with a paint that is more neutral. Replace burned out light bulbs as most home buyers flip switches to look to see what works. And lastly, make sure your air conditioner is set to a comfortable temperature.